Yeah, hey, Matt, um, what are some of the challenges you all face uh, uh, against this Buffalo defense that's uh, number one in yards and, and passing yards? Yeah, I think it's it's a uh, really good defense, um, you know, talented in the front seven, um, you know, good front four, good interior players in the front four, uh, strong and physical. I think their linebackers play instinctive. They play aggressive. Uh, two really good safeties. You know, they're, they're very strong up the middle. They've had some injuries at the corner spot, but, uh, you know, with them playing so aggressive and playing so well up front, I think it, you know, that's that's the strength of that unit. So it's going to be a good challenge for us. Um, you know, but that's right where you want to be this time of the year, playing against really good football teams, um, you know, with with uh, playoff implications on the line. And so, you know, I'm excited about that that challenge this uh, this Sunday. Yeah. And then I was just uh, asking coach about uh, it's been the last seven games. You haven't uh, passed for 300 yards. And he said, basically, he told me he and the stat guy, he's learning about winning. <laughs> Uh, you all have you have that's I have to go back right. to 2010 when when that was the last time you hadn't had a you know back in the Michael Turner days if you haven't uh, had a 300 yard game. Well, I trade I trade my position right now for the last two seasons that we were in you know and uh, with an opportunity for for the playoffs and uh, playing in meaningful games important games I think. You know, I've played for a long time and, you know, the objective is to win uh, regardless of, of how you do it. And, um, you know, it's been it's been a while, I guess. But, um, you know, it doesn't change my approach regardless of, of what we have to do. I got to find a way to help our team win. Thank you, Matt. You got to do that. Michael. Hi, Matt. Uh, first, I'm curious, are you are you or are you y'all as quarterbacks doing anything to mitigate risk? from COVID slash Omicron that's maybe changed in the last few weeks or has been something even this entire season that you've been focusing on as you've seen so many quarterbacks around the league start to kind of pop up on lists? Yeah, I mean, number one, you know, I've, I've done everything I can from a vaccination standpoint, booster standpoint. So I, you know, I, f I feel good about that. Um, obviously, you know, it's, it's obvious, obviously been spreading, you know, pr pretty, pretty wildly right now, but I think in the building, you know, Art's done a good job of of setting it up to try and mitigate the risk. We just follow, you know, the the, the rules that they set. But as far as, um, you know, us specifically meeting all year, we've been spaced out. Uh, we're not in a tight, you know, meeting room. So none of us are are really that close all day, and it's a lot of time, you know, spent separate from each other, which is different from from years past. So I think they've done a good job with that all year. Are you talking just quarterbacks? There? Are you talking about the entire offense when? When you're talking about spacing? Yeah, I think uh, just quarterbacks, um, you know, for, for throughout the year, trying to put us in different parts of the room to mitigate, you know, just just any kind of contact tracing or being around each other. Uh, but then, you know, as far as team meetings and, and offensive meetings, um, obviously, you know, the, the rules have changed in the last, I guess, last week and then this week as well. So, uh, we've, we've been spaced out in the indoor facility and in some of our bigger team meeting rooms, so nobody's really close together. And, and this is a little bit kind of off topic, I guess, but do you remember like what pregame of Super Bowl was like for you? Was it different at all? Was it like more anxiety? Was there more anxiety? Was there more anything in that situation than than in like a regular game or even a regular playoff game? Um, I mean, I, I don't. I'm, I'm never like super anxious, uh, anxiety, you know, those kind of things before games. So I don't think it was that, you know, obviously, you know, very excited. Um, I like the pregame, just the, the, the other things going on, you know, the amount of other things that, that were there probably were the, were the biggest thing that was different. Uh, but as far as my approach, you know, I, I, looking back on, it, I felt really good, you know, really confident, really similar. I try and, you know, do the same things every week. I try and, you know, get myself uh, in that same space to to go play as well as I can every week. So probably a little more excitement, but uh, for the most part, you know, I, I felt, I felt, you know, pretty good. Appreciate it. Thanks. Of course. Josh. Matt, I don't know how often you get a chance to watch Josh Allen play, but do you, do you ever cringe the way he plays the position just from a health standpoint? Do you think, you go. You worry about his long-term viability, or 
I think that's just the the he's a big listen. He's got a different build than I do. He's got he's got a little more size to him. Uh, so he's he, he's got you know a little more uh, probably wherewithal to be able to withstand some of the things that he does. Um, you know, but no, I mean, I, you know, in, in what I've watched of him, you know, I've I've always just been impressed. You know, he's tough. There's no question about it. Uh, but his ability to to extend plays and um, use his legs to make plays have been critical for their team for a couple of years. And um, I don't cringe or, or anything like that. You know, I know it's part of the game is, you know, you got to you got to handle some of those things. But um, I've certainly been impressed with with, you know, the little bit of crossover that I've seen of him the last couple of years. Thanks, man. Tori. Yeah, Matt, we were talking to Arthur and he was kind of talking about how this duo of safeties that you've kind of already talked about with Buffalo are pretty underrated. He thinks they're underrated. Um, what do you kind of see from, from that, that group specifically in kind of what they're doing that maybe doesn't show up all the time? I think, I think you see two guys that that really know the scheme well um, and, and have been in it and understand, you know, some of the issues that they have, but also some of the, the issues that they can create uh, in terms of disguising different looks uh, for offenses. And so, um, I just see confident players, you know, that's the biggest thing when you watch, when you watch them, they understand what they're being coached to do, what they're asked to do, what the issues are with their defense and where they need to be. Uh, and they give you a lot of pre-snap consternation. I mean, they move into a lot of different places. So you really, you know, you really have to do a great job, uh, during the week of, of getting yourself prepared for, for them kind of having moving parts after, after the snap and, and, uh, you know, I think they're probably as in sync, you know, from a disguise standpoint uh, with each other of, of making the looks, you know, really fit with what each one of them is doing. Uh, probably as good as anybody in the league. Gotcha. Awesome. Thank you. George Henry. I'm good. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Chris Rim, you got anything? No, I'm good. Okay, D-Led, any follow-ups? Uh, yes, um, I wanted to ask about Trumaine Edmonds, the uh, linebacker there, um, Farrell, Farrell Edmonds' uh, son, um, you know, and the play that he's been bringing for Buffalo. He's done a great job. Big physical player, uh, you know, at, at that middle linebacker position for them and uh, stout against the run. Um, you know, he, he he's a little, you know, a bit of, like a throwback to earlier guys that I saw in my career. He's a little bigger, you know, a little, little, he's got a little more size to him. Uh, and, and I think he's, he fits really well um, within what they're asking him to do. So I've been, you know, impressed with, with both their linebackers, um, but specifically him, you know, he's, he's done a good job. Thank you. Michael. Yeah. I just want to ask a little bit about what you remember about John Madden, like, and what, like if he taught you anything, whether it was like as a broad because you weren't old enough for him to be a coach, but like as a broadcaster or, you know, how much you maybe played Madden growing up, like any anything that like you remember about that or about him? Yeah, uh, he, he was the man with the cure for athlete's foot, man. It was like the boom, tough acting to I remember those commercials when I was growing up. Those were uh, those were memorable. Uh, just watching football games with him, him and Pat Summerall, I mean, that was really, you know, my youth. And so a lot of those games growing up in Philadelphia, whether it was Dallas Cowboys playing, um, you know, Philadelphia Eagles, we would get those games and watching. And it was just it's what football sounded like uh, to me growing up, you know, and um, and then, you know, the, the video game. I mean, honestly, you know, growing up playing against my older brother and my younger brother playing Madden all the time. Uh, it was just that's a fabric of of you know, of an adolescent, you know, like a, a young Matt Ryan teen, you know, that, that was what you did, you know, after school or when you're not outside playing, you're playing Madden and uh, same through college. So, um, you know, he, he, he had a big impact. I never met him, um, but he had a massive impact on me in terms of, of my youth and growing up and, and was kind of a, you know, a staple of, of my football life, whether it was watching on TV or, you know, playing the video game growing up. What team did, did you always use the same? Did you always use the same team in Madden or like, would you mix it up to do yeah, no, brothers? We, or? we would mix it up a lot. Um, 
like then they got the sort, you know, the sort uh, whenever that invention came in where you didn't know which team you were going to get. And we would just have the random teams picked up. That was what uh, we usually did, you know, with my brothers. Were you any good or did your brothers beat you pretty good? No, it was pretty, it was pretty even split, you know. Uh, we were all decent. I had a college roommate, Ryan Thompson, um, played tight end for us at BC. And uh, he was the one, I, I, he had my number. I couldn't, I couldn't get after Ryan ever in, uh, in Madden. He kind of wore out our entire room. But he was, he was a pretty serious gamer at that point. Cool. Appreciate it. Thanks, Matt. No problem. All right. Thanks, everybody.